All right, guys, this video is going to walk you through how to communicate with the Tweedo PLC over the Ethernet. So I'm going to open up my Tweedo suite here. And I'm going to put it into programming mode now. And I'm just going to grab any project that I've been working on. So I'm going to open up a recent project. This three wire, I think I use this to do a forward reverse. So I'm going to open this guy up. And I'm going to go to program to see what's going on in the program. There's all my inputs and outputs. I'm going to go to program and just make sure that on the program, everything's cool before I go forward. So I'm going to analyze the program and I see no errors whatsoever. So I'm good to go. So what I want to do is I want to drop this into the PLC um, over my serial cable. So I'm going to go to debug. And I'm going to use this serial cable here that's connected up to my COM3 of my computer. Depending on which computer you're using, it'll depend on which COM uh, port that your computer is using for that serial cable. And I'm going to establish the communications. And normally I had to pause the video there, but since this program is already in my PLC because I've been playing around with it, it just instantly goes to here. I'm going to hit the run, and that will allow me to talk to the PLC, beautiful. And by using that serial cable, I'm using this guy right here from Telemechanique. So this guy here, I believe is a USB to, I think this is RS-232 uh, connection, um, but I'm really not clear on that. Um, this part number right here, I will leave in the comment section below. Um, this conversion where it goes from USB to uh, RS-232, um, it costs about 300 bucks for this little patch cable. So um, this times 12 or 22 different stations in the lab for us doesn't make economical sense. Um, it's great if we've lost the IP address, but it's much easier for us to talk over uh, an ethernet cable right here. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use this first and then how to change to the ethernet. So right now we can clearly communicate with the PLC because I can hit my start, my stop, and my reverse, and everything's working properly. Now watch what happens if I disconnect this cable right here. The program's still in the PLC. Um, I can still control, no, I can't control it anymore. There we go, there we go. So I still have control over the, the PLC. Beautiful, but if we leave it for a couple more seconds, um, it will, there we go, it says that I've lost communication with the PLC, okay? I can still control it, so the program is still there, um, but I can't see what's going on on my screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reconnect this cable here, and that way I'll be able to see everything change on the screen, I just have to reconnect here. So I'm gonna reestablish communication, I'm gonna retry. So you know, sometimes this doesn't uh, work. There we go. Okay, and now I can clearly see that when I hit the forward push button, there it is. Hit the stop. Beautiful, so everything's coming in real time here. Beautiful, okay. But again, um, that limits me as to how I can communicate with this PLC. Um, and if I have other units that I want to bring in, like a touchscreen and stuff like that, um, I'd rather use the Ethernet connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this. And then I'm going to disconnect from the PLC. And I've got this other connection right here for my Ethernet. Now, this isn't instantly set up. You have to set this up. So let me walk you how, through how to do this. First thing is we're gonna to go to describe. And I'm gonna double click on this ethernet connection right here. And that brings up my IP address, my subnet mask, and my gateway address. And for hours I was trying to communicate with this PLC and just losing my mind, I had consistently put 192.168.1.11. By putting in that one, I could not communicate with the PLC. Um, so I'm fr frantically sending uh, my guru, Ted Lewis, a text to try and figure out what the heck I need to do to talk to this PLC. And he says, well, you got to check to see where your computer's IP address is, and they have to be similar. And so my computer's address does not have a one there. 
but how do you find your computer's IP address? Well, let me show you a few things. So I'm going to cancel this guy. Just drop this down for two seconds. Now, in order to, if you do a quick little Google search, it says to check out your IP config for the computer. So I type this in numerous times and you'll see that it just flashes on the screen and then disappears. And I'm like, what is going on? Type in IP, IP config again, right? And I'm like, how come that's not coming in and allowing me to see what the IP configuration actually is? Uh, and by doing a little bit more reading, that flash there is just saying the computer's done the IP configuration and it's done. So there's no need to see what it's done. So in order to see what the values are, you have to go down to the bottom here and you put in command and that will bring up your command prompt. And then you type in IP config and it gives you everything about your computer. Okay, if I scroll up here, I can see that my IP address for my computer is 192.168.2.204. Um, so, and then I've got my subnet mask at 255.255.255.0. And then my default gateway is 192.168.2.1. So you can see that when I put a one here for these values, I consistently wasn't able to talk to my PLC. So by putting in a two, I was able to actually talk to it. Now, I may have said some things that are uh, incorrect in these guys. Don't kill me in the comment section. This is uh, something that I still really have to take some time to understand um, what each of these values are. If you have any videos or anything that you can um, direct me to to understand um, IP configuration and Ethernet communication with PLCs, I would really appreciate it. But I am by far me, I'm not an expert in that whatsoever. Hardly an expert in PLCs either. But let's keep going. Okay, so when we go to here and we double click on this bad boy, uh, then we've got the IP address, the subnet mask, and the gateway address. So I have chosen 11 here for my IP address. I've used the two there so I can talk to it. And I saw from that IP config that my gateway is 192.168.2.1. Beautiful, okay? If I go over here to this preference and double click here, come on, there we go. Um, let me show you how this was set up. So this will most likely be there at that point. If it's not, so if you still have that serial port just there, then we're going to add another connection. And then what we're going to do is it already comes up in, as an Ethernet. For this serial connection, we need to use uh, Punit. And it, from what I understand, this Punit does not take out any of these guys whatsoever. Like it doesn't make you make use of baud rate or parity or stop bits or anything like that. Um, for the ethernet, it has to be a direct connection here. Now the IP that I used was 192.168.2.11 for the PLC. Okay, so you may want to write that down because if you're like me, you have uh, a memory like a sieve. Okay, so that's cool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up and we're gonna hit apply. Okay, now that value is there in our PLC. Sorry, not in our PLC, but in our Tweedo suite. So we're gonna go back to program. And now that everything is hopefully connected cor correctly for this um, connection now, now we can establish connection through that ethernet. Okay, so now we're gonna talk to this over the ethernet. Again, I'm gonna take this guy out. That was my serial connection. And now I'm going to rely on the Ethernet cable. So I have three Ethernet cables here. I have one Ethernet cable right here, and that's going from my switch. So if you've been wondering what these other components are on the previous videos, this is a 24 volt power supply. Um, this one I'll use uh, later on. We're not going to talk about this guy right here, but this is a 24 volt power supply. And this is essentially just a switch. And so the, the 120 comes in here. 24 volts DC powers up the switch over here and the three connections that I have into that switch are This Ethernet cable right here, which goes from my laptop into the switch Then I've got an Ethernet cable that goes from the switch to the PLC and then I've also got this third Ethernet cable and this guy goes to uh, my router in the house. So this goes from the switch to the laptop 
This guy goes from the Switch to the PLC. These two are not the only ones you need. You also need to be connecting into some type of router. So this would connect into the network in the lab. Okay, so now we're going to create that connection now. So we're gonna to go to establish communication. Again, it's the same uh, program that was in the PLC, so there's no lag there. Um, and right now we're talking to the PLC. Let's put it into run mode. Waiting for that green light to come up. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the forward push button. There you go. I'm gonna hit the stop. And I'm gonna hit the reverse. Beautiful. So we're now talking to the, the PLC over the Ethernet now. Okay, so we don't need to use that $300 serial cable, but what was essential was that when we, talk, when we set that communication up with the PLC, it was essential that we put in the appropriate IP address, right? So when we went to describe and we double clicked on here, we put in the right IP address and on your station, if you're working in the lab, there is a Lamacoid that says the IP address for the PLC, for the computer, for the HMI, for the drive, you have to put in the right IP address. Otherwise, what you'll do is you'll drop in the wrong IP address or there'll be um, another IP address in the, in the lab that has the exact same value um, and then you won't be able to talk to the PLC and then you're gonna have to run and grab this guy um, in order to reset your IP on that PLC. Okay, so it's crucial that you put in the right IP address, your right subnet mask, and your gateway address. All right, guys, that's basically it. So now you'll be able to talk to the PLC over the Ethernet cable, and we'll be able to drop in our programs. Uh, and you could draw in the lab, you could find that IP. Not that we're going to do this because I want you to work on your own PLC, but you could be working on a computer across the lab. And as long as you put in the appropriate IP address for your buddy's PLC, you'd be able to drop in a program onto that PLC. All right, guys, any questions, concerns, leave them in the, uh, the comment sections. Again, don't kill me on the comment section. Um, I'm just learning about these uh, IP addresses and everything. But if you do have um, some good resources, then, uh, then tell us about it so we can understand um, exactly how this Ethernet communication is working. Thanks, guys. See you in the next video.